So you want to learn about your cousin, Virginia, and what she's all about. Let's talk about the Valkyria class. So Virginia is a frontline tank, typically, because she has two shields, and two shields are better than one. Her evasion is kind of on the lower side, as you'd expect. Her defensive stats are quite good at base. Her health is quite good. Her basic physical attack is also decent. Her default growth types are defensive and hardy. Now you can mirror her based on what your team needs, but these are fine if you just want her tanking. And let's go over her character details. So sword, shield, infantry. So she's another one of these tanks that is not an armored. And that is very, very important because armored units have explicit weaknesses. They have low magic defense and they have enemies that can straight up one shot them and punish them for blocking and guarding. And she has fewer things that punish her and can basically just out tank most legionnaires and hoplites and things like this. She has six stamina, 80 movements. So on the slower side, but six stamina is nice. Take less damage from range assists. So in the team she's in, I also have a Sainted Knight, and currently she is the leader for mobility, but also take less damage from magic assists if I need to. If I'm fighting a bunch of archer teams that are actually proving to be a problem, I can run this. Uh, typically I don't need to though, but it is there if you need it. So with the Sainted Knight, you have protection from both. Only one at a time though, so keep that in mind. Uh, for her rapport bonuses, she has increased magic defense some physical attacks, some accuracy. Now you can kind of play into these a little bit. It can be useful to see what kind of bonuses you can get her. This is something that's more of like on the min-maxing side, maybe as we learn more about the game, but anything that improves defense is helpful for that. Uh, for weaknesses and matchups, I would say the only thing that really hurts her are things that punish blocking a lot, but she typically out-tanks them anyways. Uh, let's go over her skills now. So this class is actually very interesting because it hard counters things that it probably shouldn't. <laughs> so the first thing it hard counters is it can true strike flying enemies, ignore 50% of their defense and gain 50 per, or plus 50 potency. So you're hitting with 150 potency and ignoring half of their defense with vertical edge for one action point. If she attacks a flyer, it typically one shots it. This is absolutely crazy. Uh, basically, it bypasses the need for her to be on offensive growth types and just allows her to just whack birds out of the sky. Now, she also has Iron Crusher, which is an unguardable uh, attack that does the exact same thing except against Armored. Ignore 50% versus Armored, plus 50 potency versus Armored. So she can kill Armored or at least deal heavy damage to them, and she can typically one-shot Flyers. And there are a lot of Flyers in this game, including enemy Angels. So there's quite a lot of flyers to smack. Uh, brandish, attack a single enemy. This is unlocked at level 30, so you're not gonna have this for a while. But once you do get it, it's pretty crazy. Uh, attack a single enemy, ignores 50% of their defense, grants the user plus one passive point, unguardable, hits three times. So basically it's a 150 potency attack that ignores half of the foe's defense and generates a passive point. Now she actually has some other things in her, her kit that are quite crazy. Uh, Maiden's Hammer. This, when I first read this, I couldn't believe it. It's like, it's ridiculous what this does. Activates, so one passive point at level 15. Uh, pretty easy to get this. Activates after an enemy attacks with an active skill. Now she has to typically be the targets or hit by like a row attack or something, or a column attack for this to activate. So she needs to be the target. Counter attack, a single enemy with a true attack, 150 potency. Potency increases the less HP the user has up to 100. So if you're losing health throughout a fight and your Maiden's Hammer spamming, you will get some good damage off. In combination with these other things, she typically tanks pretty well. Uh, Iron Veil activates at the start of battle. This one is kind of crazy. <laughs> now, this is for tanking. The team in question doesn't really run this often, but if you had no activates at the start of battle ability, this is not bad plus 50% guard rate and plus 30% physical defense to all allies is a pretty serious buff that's going to improve your tanking. And this is just nice to have if you want to use it. Uh, Undying Will. So I didn't unlock this yet, but I'm about to in one level up. Attack, let's see, attack, I'm sorry, activates before <laughs> attacking with active skill. Attack potency increases as HP decreases. Uh, maximum plus 100, 
grants the ability to survive one lethal blow. So this is nice because if you want to sit at low health and leverage the Maiden's Hammer uh, attack and also like a big Brandish or a Vertical Edge or Iron Crusher, this just gives you damage scaling. So pretty huge. It's pretty cheap too. It also could just be something you do when you're at like below 50% health if you want to go for a big hit or if you need to change your tactics to secure a kill. Uh, next we have Royal Guard, which is an equip skill, but she does join with this. So she joins with the item this has, so we'll consider this something that's part of her kit. Uh, activates before being hit by a physical attack, block an enemy guard or an enemy attack with medium guard. User recovers 25% HP. This is fantastic because she is going to be eating a lot of physical attacks and just allowing her to main tank off of healing without support. Now, if she has support, she'll tank even better, but without support, she can tank fairly well. So this is the overall theme of just like, you know, punishing certain things, killing certain things, and having this pretty solid counterattack. Uh, for Valor skills, dual shield, this is huge value too. Even if you're just using her on your team and she's not the party leader, allied units within range will not incur assist attacks or first strikes. So very often in true Zenoiran mode, your team will stomp the enemy team if it's set up correctly, but then all the assist spam, if, especially if there's like three plus things, like archers or mages or whatever doing ranged and magic assist, that is what will deal damage and maybe kill some of your backliners that are squishy. So popping this for one valor point is pretty cheap and will allow you to push into those dangerous fights safely. And also there's a five item limit on true Zenoira, and so you really want to offload all of the things that you would typically use from items. So for example, you would use the item Great Canopy or Fairy Charm, I think is what it's called. Let's see, yeah, Wind Fairy's Charm. You'd use one of these, but because you only have five item uses, you're better off using something else to get that effect. Oops, that's character list. Let's go back to the formation. Okay. So, her other skill, Blade Wave. Now, Blade Wave is very nice. It's two Valor points for good damage. It does 1.5 times damage if the leader of the enemy party can use assists, and it has a huge range, and you can aim it to punish and kill like enemy assist and guard tower bots. So if it's like a healer assist, if it's a range assist, if it's a magic assist leader, you can blade wave them from really far away, oftentimes one-shotting them, but almost always two-shotting them. So if you use this twice, it's four valor points and she can just whack in like a wide line, uh, pretty big damage at range to allow other allies to push through and it can damage barricades. So this is a pretty good ability. It does not move the unit unlike things like Wild Rush, but it can clear the way uh, for other units and get, just get rid of range assists. So a pretty good unit for punishing, you know, assist bots or killing key targets for main tanking. She can do a lot. All right, let's go over the build I'm running her on. So she's on King's Blade Cornix for the stat increase. Not really for the damage. I think most of her damage is going to come from punishing specific things or just brandishing. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, also, things like Maiden's Hammer, that's where most of her damage is coming from. Uh, but I'm using this for the increase to guard rate, the increase to initiative, the increase to physical defense, magical defense, and it also increases attack too. So it's basically a 20 attack sword. So it's pretty good for like a main tank or something that you want durability on. It also, you know, boosts literally everything guard rate, crit rate, evasion, accuracy, initiative. So it's quite nice. Now, there are other things she could run. Uh, she could run this, for example, which gives her more initiative. It also gives her some evasion, which can kind of help because in some cases where you don't block, you might evade, even if you just have a little bit of evade. Uh, Royal Saber would be fine. Uh, Bandit's Longsword would be okay. Uh, crits on her, you could go for crits on her if you want to run something like Wyvern Razor. I would wait until you can upgrade. Uh, Meteorite Sword is good on her. It gives her guard rate HP, so this is a very logical weapon for her. Uh, it has good might. The plus 20 HP allows her to tank better. The guard rate allows her to tank better, so you can't go wrong with those. Uh, Hallowed Blade could be decent because she just heals when she attacks, so if she's just taking a lot of sources of chip damage, 
she can really put in work from that. Uh, this is interesting. I don't think it's a follow-up attack. It's a counter. Yeah, we don't want to run follow-up attack spam on her. We want to run counters, so the hunters could be interesting. Uh, Zenoiran Night Sword is also really good. It gives you HP and defense, as well as has good stats. So this is a good option for her. Uh, what else? Definitely not that. Wing Crest Blade. You could run this, assuming you're not going for crits. It just gives her an extra passive point. Now, in this particular build, she doesn't need it, but you could run it. All right, so let's look at what she is running. So the blue rose shield gives passive point plus one and royal guard, which is the thing that allows her to heal off a of physical, which is very useful for allowing her to tank. Now, you might have noticed, like, how does she interact with magic? I just have a sainted knight to magic barrier. And if I needed to, I can uh, toggle row barrier. But Sainted Knights plus her, really hard to punch through that. You have like a, a near uncounterable tank that doesn't really die to physical. And then you have like a hard magic counter. So this is kind of like a good combo, I think. All right, so Blue Rose Shield. I have on Azure Crest Shield for plus one more passive points. Uh, the, now the thing with double weapons is it uses the stats of the higher and then any extra effects you get. So if it says uh, base passive point plus one, then you get it. But if it says guard efficiency plus 25, uh, guard efficiency plus 25 actually hold on so all right so the things i know about this physical defense will be six plus six here the plus five will be ignored and the guard rate will be ignored so look at the stats right now guard rate 58 it's still guard rate 58 so that's that for sure is the case but for efficiency i think it actually might factor in both because that's a stat that's separate from both of those so for example if we have guard efficiency plus 25 i believe it does add it and the way guard efficiency works I haven't really dived too deeply into it, but someone was explaining it on the Discord, on my Discord. Uh, essentially, if you have a generic block that is not an ability, it will use your guard efficiency. So if your guard efficiency is 50, that's basically a medium block, because that's a 50% damage reduction. So if your guard efficiency 25, 25, you should be guard efficiency 50, because it adds the passive stats. It doesn't add the hard stats, right? So for example, if I equip a shield that gives me uh, burn immunity, I now have burn immunity plus whatever the other shield gives as passives. If I equip a shield that gives me magic defense, notice how my magic defense goes up. So based on this, guard efficiency should be 50% with this unit at all times. All right. And then I just have her on Carnelian Pendant. Now the shields, the shield spam, the fact that she has two shields, some might think that's like a downside. It's actually not. Uh, most shields have access to everything you would want. So if you need... Uh, poison and blindness immunity here you go on luminous shield if you need to heal and you want some more max hp you can run this uh, if you want some evasion and uh, accuracy you can run this if you want magic defense in addition to normal defense you can run that uh, if you want radiant cover blindness immunity there's a lot of really nice things on shields so it is not a downside at all in fact it might be better because there are some crazy shields there's even an action point shield so like there, it's basically about as good as running you know another passive now there are things that give like plus two ap for example but as you can see in her build right now if i were to run the shield i'm at four ap so it's like i don't really need that uh if i get it from a shield uh but that's for that now for pendants there is a pendant that would be really good on her that's being used by someone else that i think i got from the coliseum and let's see let's find it really quick it is the hybrid pendant. Somewhere around here. Maybe it's considered, yeah, hero's medallion. Sorry, it's not a pendant. So this is a perfect weapon for her. If you want to run like an active point and a passive point shield each, or an active point sword, a passive point shield, and then a utility shield, this would be great for her. It boosts her damage. It gives her one of each point. So if you want to hit four in each thing, you can do that. So that would be good for her. Uh, but for other weapons, you know, we went over the weapons. Basically, you want things that improve durability. You can run utility weapons, like if you need to freeze or something, you can do something like that. So you can run, you know, anti-air. I don't know that this would be better than her normal attack, though. It is ranged. So there's, like, there's a lot of utility swords that can be pulled out for specific use cases. And swords have a lot of options. But there's also a lot of tanking swords, too. So there's a lot of options for, for swords, for shields, and for or item slot, because she has two shield slots. And then when she promotes, she gets this item slot. 
But the shield slots are not a downside. This is a fan this is probably one of the best units in the game, at least as far as I can tell. All right, now this guy wants to fight. Let's see, where is the team? Some of those teams are just like placeholder teams. All right, so against these guys, let's see. I think they're negating the magic of my team. If I, if I were to guess, they're probably doing that. Now she could, well, she's gonna be death spinning. So let's have some, let's change the rows maybe. We'll, we'll take this fight even though it doesn't look like we killed them. I think it's because of all the row healing. They also have backliners that are avoid tanks, but we'll just show what Virginia does in this fight. Dragon's Roar. <laughs> we both initiative down each other. That's funny. Your Ruse's weakness. Alright, and then those tank her magic pretty well. Yeah, there's a lot of magic barriers going on here. They tank half of my team's damage, that's why we're not killing. This team is very tanky though, so I don't mind it. She got burned. We have a cure, so it doesn't matter. Saint's Blade. She could be on something better here. I could have her on Shatter. So that she like starts pulling action points off of them. That probably would have been... I could have optimized the team to counter this, but... For the sake of a live recording demo. <laughs> We'll hold off. Got me good. Oh, because my one guy, my one guy didn't do the the conferral, or maybe he did. All right, brandish. It's pretty good damage. It almost killed that. I shall ease your pain. I can yet fight. That spin. Yeah, their front line's actually surprisingly tanky. I probably could have switched to stun, maybe. Not enough AP. Vertical edge. So she's a tanky frontliner that can deal damage. She's not fighting into her counters here. So these things are actually not really dying, but she's still quite tanky. She basically wants to be like support damage that helps your team. Like she's not gonna be the damage carry. That's not her job. Her job is to tank. So the thing that actually went wrong here, he used remove weakness, which he did not need to do. So we didn't get Frostbrand Tome off. So that's actually a problem. He needs a better build. He's on like a junk build right now, but he boosts her thing. He frost conferls her so that when she elemental roars, it freezes them. And then she benefits because her death spin does more damage. So if I would have just made that change, we probably would have killed there. Uh, but yeah, that's it for this one. Uh, Virginia is a really good main tank. And aside from that, she can deal a little bit of damage. She definitely deals more damage than like a hoplite. That's for sure. Uh, I haven't tested the bears out yet, so maybe those are about equivalents. But yeah, definitely subscribe if you enjoyed this friend that's useful, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.